Hello and welcome to the Education Podcast, where we explore diverse perspectives and innovative approaches in education. I am Abdul Salam Amo. Today, we delve into the unique world of faith based schooling with two distinguished guests, a Muslim and a Christian school proprietor. They are Mr. Abdulafiz Animashan and Mr. Namso Okoi. Together, they will share their experiences and insights on integrating religious teachings with academic excellence, fostering inclusive communities, and preparing students for a multicultural world. Join us for an enlightening discussion on the challenges and triumphs of faith-based education. Hello, sirs. Thank you very much. Thank you. What inspired your interest in establishing a faith-based school? Faith-based schools are schools owned by individual Christians okay. or Christian organizations. Either they are churches or other other uh, Christian um, um, enterprises or, or organizations. So from, for, for us, we needed a school that will teach both our own religious beliefs combined with the curriculum that is taught in conventional schools. Because we needed our children to continue the learning process of having, holding on to their own convictions, which we see as something the foundation should not, the foundation laid from childhood should not be eroded. So we wanted that foundation to be sustained and whatever is built on that foundation to be sustained. So those things are also taught in conventional schools that are okay. We need to combine it with the religious convictions and principles as practice and belief. Uh, well, well, actually, in my own case, I'm not the one that started the school. The school was started by my parents, uh, Mr. and late Mrs. Uh, Anima Shao. So I became the head of school in 2004. So basically, our school is a mixture of both um, faith, but we, the owners, we are Muslims, and we try as much as possible to project our faith. So the uh, Christians, the, the Christians, so they are also welcome in our school, and uh, we do our things without any uh, issues. The Muslims. They do uh, the Islamic education, the Arabic education, and we also have um, the uh, Quran memorization um, sessions. And for the Christians too, they have their own CRK class and other uh, programs. So basically, uh, my parents, they started the school uh, for everybody. Are we getting it now? So it's not really uh, one um, um, faith school. Per se, but we can say about 87% of our puppies are Muslims. So, and we, they know that we, the owners, we also Muslims and we do everything that Islam encourages us to do, uh, in the, in the school. So that's what I can say, uh, for that. Seems like your response, uh, compared to that, Mr. Nimashan, how does your school get to integrate religious teachings with academic curriculum? To provide a well-rounded education. What we do is that uh, in our school, at the beginning of every session, we look at the uh, we try to design our own curriculum that will fit into our our school. We look at the uh, Lagos State um, uh, curriculum. Then we also add some things to it. We design our own, uh, and uh, we try as well to incorporate. Uh, Islamic teachings in all the topics that will be taught uh, for the uh, for the session. So you know, in Islam, Islam talks about everything. So we try to as well to encourage to infuse our own teachings, Islamic teachings, in whatever we teach uh, our pupils. So I think that's basically what uh, we do. We try as much as possible. You know, our society is uh, the reason of a lot of. Uh, uh, moral values. So we try as much as also to make sure that our Islamic teachings are embedded in everything that we teach our pupils 
in the school so that it will not be only Western education that the pupils are receiving. They also get the teachings uh, of, of the faith. And it really shows when the pupils go out that uh, this kind of pupil, they are exposed to uh, religious and moral um, teachings. So we try to also infuse uh, moral and Islamic teachings into everything that we do. For Christian um, faith day schools, we strive to balance religious teachings with the academic curriculum to provide a holistic education. And uh, looking at the integrated curriculum, we do what we call balanced scheduling. The, the schools integrate religious studies into the daily or weekly timetable. We ensure that there is adequate time for both academic subjects and uh, uh, the religious teachings. We stand uh, moral instructions. And apart from that, we have what we call holistic development, where we emphasize moral and spiritual development alongside intellectual growth. We incorporate these values based on the Christian faith into the various subjects um, in order to promote a well-rounded education. Even for our te teachers, we give them dual training. Our teachers are trained in both academic and religious instructions. And uh, this will enable them to deliver a curriculum that respects both the secular and the spiritual development of our learners. And uh, the regular training and workshops that we do for our teachers, for our staff, they help them to stay updated with educational best practices while reinforcing the school's religious ethics. And not just that, we look at the character education. We see that it is very important that we incorporate character education in programs. So what about programs that we do? Talk about the Children's Day, Independence Day, uh, Parents' Day, whatever programs that we do. We try to incorporate this um, character uh, education into these very programs where we emphasize on religious values like uh, promoting uh, integrity, encouraging compassion, um, showing respect, and not just that. We talk about service learning. We try to also build in community service and social responsibility as taught in our own Christian faith. So we see these things are linked to relate, um, our own faith. We make sure that these things are incorporated into the own learning. And like I talked about the the activity programs, that is the extracurricular activities. Um, talking about sports, arts, clubs, and and the rest. They receive, the the learners receive broad education, which will nurture their uh, different talents and interests. So how do you measure the success of your faith based educational programs, both in terms of academic achievement and spiritual development? The instrument used for measurement, they are all the same. Because the environment is a supportive environment. The school environment is designed in such a way that it reflects these values and teachings, both of the secular world and the religious world. So the instrument that we use in assessing their own um, academic growth, academic progress, academic development, is also the same instrument we use in measuring their own spiritual growth and development. We measure our pupils uh, basically through tests, um, the exam, then for the, uh, uh, the moral um, aspects, we observe them, uh, we try as as possible to, uh, we get feedbacks from their parents too. So those are the ways by which we uh, uh, measure them. So for the normal, the, the usual um, the test and exam, that is then we also observe them, we try as much as possible to monitor them very well. Anytime, even when they're at home, uh, when they're on the streets, we also encourage them to always be of good behavior. Then we get feedbacks from parents, even in the community too. 
So uh, pupils, uh, there is this. Uh, they, they they seems unique because not everybody, uh, not all schools are after the spiritual and moral, uh, moral development of children. So, but our pupils they stand out because they attend the school whereby uh, the school take their moral development and spiritual of and very serious. So our pupils they we see them they become um, very different. And uh, we are happy about the little people. Not that they are the, the, the they are very different from us, but at least you know the, the, the moral decadence in society is very much. Uh, but at least there is some element of difference in our purpose. And uh, we pray that we continue to improve on it. We also encourage parents too. Uh, you know, there is little the school can do. So we encourage parents to be of good behavior even at home. And we are calling during our interactions with children, PTA meetings, and we have one-on-one -on -one discussion with them. We also encourage them that these are what we teach our pupils. This we expect you to, to also uh, be above uh, board. And most of them are always happy about all this. And uh, these are the ways by which we uh, uh, measure our pupils' uh, performances. What are the new challenges that are in balancing the legal values with secular? Uh, one of the challenges is the time. So there is no more time to cover everything. So the pupils, they are doing a whole lot of subjects. And we also infuse our own religious um, teachings. They will do Arabic, they will do Islamic um, studies, and they also do Quran memorization. So all these things, uh, uh, they take a lot of uh, time. But we try much as well to, to balance everything, just to make sure that we do everything that the pupils are expected to, to, to know. So one of the major challenges I feel we have is the time. There is no enough uh, uh, time. And um, that's why uh, in our school we close by 3 o'clock. Normal school closing. So we close by 3 uh, o'clock. Because by 2 we go for solats. Then after solat we still come back to the class. We do final um, um, session. And we close by three o'clock. While normal schools close by two o'clock, so we feel that we need more time to uh, be able to cover a whole lot of um, things. So one of the major challenges is the the timing. So that's what I can see is a major challenge. Um, in balancing with the religious and secular content is one of the challenges because the faith based school, the, the school is not just meant for just Christians, we have others that can also come in. So, being able to integrate this, to be able to blend, be able to blend between the Christians and non-Christians could be, can be very challenging. Um, like the curriculum integration, it requires careful planning to ensure that both all the companies receive adequate attention without compromising um, academic rigor or religious values. But when people come in, and uh, some of them might not, them, their background, their parental background, might not be, um, might, might be somehow not friendly. So uh, uh, being able to drill those children, take them, the learners through our own convictions, at times seem to be a little bit challenging as per the curriculum integration. And the other challenge that we have, which uh, my colleague has talked about, is time allocation. Um, having sufficient time for both religious studies and the standard academic subjects has always been very challenging, um, especially between the constraint of a, a typical school day. Uh -huh. uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, challenging, it's quite challenging. Not just that, um, complying with educational regulations, we really see that you must ensure that the curriculum meets the national education standards at all times or the particular states. So the guidelines in incorporating these religious teachings sometimes lead to conflicts or the need for um, additional coursework. Um, we also, the next challenge that we have is um, standard testing. Um, preparing the students for standardized tests that do not take religious content into account can also be a little bit challenging because it requires us to provide extra support in uh, circular subjects. And uh, um, in all this, you really, you really um, 
we need to know that we are trying to maintain academic excellence. So the dual focus, ensuring that our students achieve high academic um, standards while also receiving a robust religious education demands a careful balance, often requiring us to look for additional uh, resources. We, we, we do extra budgeting and that is extra costs and uh, teaching stand, uh, strategies, teaching techniques, teaching methodologies. Uh, another challenge we'll say is um, having qualified teachers to be able to meet your own standards. Because this um, integrated curriculum, um, you really need teachers that you need to train that will know how to handle this blended curriculum. So they are, these are the few challenges. But there are still others in the way, um, resource availability. And let me just stop there for now. How do we ensure that the schools foster a sense of community and inclusivity among households of various backgrounds? Well, we try as much as possible. You know, a sense of community is an important human need. So we try as much as possible to carry all the stakeholders of the school along in everything that we do. Uh, particularly our pupils, we also take them into consideration in our decision making. We have uh, the uh, the prefects, the student representatives in the school. So we try to also uh, to uh, teach them leadership skills by appointing them as prefects, and we also involve them in decision making. We fill the pause of the pupils. We try to also uh, let them uh, let we try to know what they feel about the school and they also come up with their own ideas so we don't see because they are children that they don't know they can also give you ideas on how to treat them uh, uh, better so we get the pulse of the pupils through the prefects uh, the once in a while we also invite the senior prefects the senior boy uh, yeah. to be part of uh, maybe a small, maybe uh, a soft management meeting, something like that. So those are ways by which we uh, carry everybody along. Then the parents too, we try to have someone to guide them along in our decision. We let them speak their mind during PTA meetings. We make sure that they speak their mind on how we are teaching their public on how we run um, the school. So we get their inputs, and it really assists us um, a lot. Then our teachers, they are very important in decision making of the school. So we hold our, our meetings regularly, and some of them also who are in the management level, they also participate in the management uh, 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 meeting. So we try to to carry everybody along. Then our community too, we try to to make sure that we have good rapport with them. We, when they observe every anything, they tell us, and they will also seek their support in one way or the other. So we try to make sure that everybody is carried along in the school. So uh, that's basically what we, those are the things that I feel that we do to have a sense of the uh, community. For us, we try to foster a sense of community and belonging between the students, the teachers, and the families. Um, number one, pre school events and uh, celebrations. We use um, these events to bring the entire school community together. We create a shared, a, a shared sense of identity and belonging. Um, not only that, through service projects, we try to initiate outreach programs that will encourage the students and the families to work together for common causes, fostering a sense of unity and uh, shared purpose. Like um, the place where um, where our school is, we the roads, the two roads, um, we try to make sure that those roads are always kept neat and tidy. And through the PTA, the parents just station, our parents just um, phone. We the active uh, we, we make it so active that we provide a platform for parents to participate in school activities. Um, that is um, 
we try to share with them the the routine activities we get feedback from them their own contributions and um, decision making processes and the uh, community building efforts we try to make them part of these things that we do whether they are christian parents or they are non-christian parents and uh, for family days a time that um, we have open days family picnics um like the parents students sports days we try to strengthen the bond between the school and the families and definitely the families the communities around around us and they also through our faith-based practices like the daily prayers religious observance and um, we, we, we try to make that plan even when the public holiday is declared and it is it, it affects the, the the other faith we try to also respect those days so we try to observe those days so that or that there will be that unity this other knows that okay this particular day is for this faith this is the other day is for this faith so we try to do those things and we make sure that we have a supportive school environment that will be that unity between even the alumni the older students and the ones that are still in school there is a, a room for mentorship between that the the older ones and the younger ones you see that that sense of continuity and and the belonging within the school community and also the outside community is sustained what is the role of religious education in promoting moral and ethical development in students the uh, importance of religious education cannot be overemphasized. Uh, when uh, school staff are supposed to infuse moral and uh, religious teachings in their activities, then the pupils will be better off and the society too will also benefit from it. Look at the issue of um, the examination of parties that as a average education sector now. Uh, it is because people are not uh, don't have the fear of God. A child is exposed to uh, proper religious education from uh, the very first day of the school, then will not be involved in examination by practice. So the importance of religious education cannot be overemphasized. So we, the children need to be taught all these things, and when they are properly grounded then the cycle too will be better off. When we have people who really uh, get their certificates legally, then well, the society will be better off. You can imagine if uh, a doctor uh, gets his uh, medical um, certificate through cheating, then what kind of doctor do, do, do we think we are going to have in the society? So, religious education is very, very important. So, the society, if the students are well uh, uh, grounded, then the society too will be better off. So we need to discourage examination of practice and our pupils too, they need to be taught as uh, religious education in order to be able to behave well in the society. Uh, most times when you see children or uh, secondary uh, uh, primary school, secondary school, you see lack of morals. And this is due to the fact that they are not properly taught uh, religious education from home and also in the in the school. So you see, pupils who are exposed to religious education, they are usually calm, they are respectful, and you see them doing very well. So when we infuse uh, our religious education, I think everybody will be better off. Uh, the importance of religious education cannot be overemphasized. So uh, governments to Pay more attention to religious education. Uh, it, sh it shouldn't be only uh, the, other, uh, the other subjects alone. Then religious education must be given the desired attention uh, uh, it deserves. Religious education should continue to have a place in our schools. It should not be... Because most schools, they, they, they take um, religious education as this one is not really important. So that's why you see some schools don't offer some of these subjects, apart from, well, we are faith-based schools, but normally, even if you are not a faith-based school, you are supposed to offer um, Islamic studies or uh, Christian religious um, uh, knowledge, but some schools don't offer these subjects. 
they feel that they are not important. But what do we have at the end of the day? The couples will not uh, have any exposure to all these things. So, and it really affects the children and in turn affect the society. So we need to place more emphasis on religious education as we also take care of the other uh, subjects. Like my colleague has um, rightly said, religious education cannot be in any way ignored, especially in our, in our own country, Nigeria. Teaching our children STEM, um, science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, alone, without balancing it or with moral upbringing training, will not help our own children. Our children will be exposed to um, the, 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 the negative biases that go on the society. Uh, if, if they are not taught um, things that will make them to have sound and moral education, you discover that they will become agents of corruption. Most of the time, like they have, my colleague has pointed out in some of practice, some people, it has um, become a common knowledge among some people that it's no longer wrong. Because they have thrown away the fabrics, the, the, the foundation of honesty, the foundation of diligence, hard work, integrity, where the children were taught that a good name is better than uh, gold and uh, silver. Uh -huh. It is a situation where the learners are taught about the get rich quick syndrome, that they are exposed to uh, get rich quick syndrome, uh, get rich quick syndrome. You see that the children do not concentrate on learning. They feel that what's the sense of the learning? Why do I need to study? Why do I need to come to school? The the, the moral aspect will teach a child about punctuality. That is a, an aspect of diligence. That punctuality is the soul of any business. That if you want to succeed, you need to be punctual. You go to some offices where people go to work anytime they like, and when they go in there, you see that they 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 they, they falsify the, the time records. They they came in by nine, that they were right. They came in by by seven o'clock. That is that is this honesty. So these aspects, uh, religious teachings, religious education. Religious exposure, they help this uh, to build this foundational framework that help our learners to grow up. Um, um, the Bible says that train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So, if a child is only taught in the aspect of science, in the aspect of engineering, um, um, technology, engineering, arts, management, mathematics, mathematics, or what have you. And the, 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 the religious teachings that will incorporate these values, these ethics, these norms into them are not there. You see that their learning will be, will be worthless. And you know, in the university, we're told that you say the person is worthy um, in character and in, and in learning. So that character, that is the religious aspect, then before the learning. So character comes first before the learning. It's not learning before the character. Those are the strategies that we've implemented to engage parents and guidance in the educational and spiritual development of their children. We have already said that um, it's quite challenging running a third day school because of um, uh, some, some people don't accept the ethical standards set by faith, faith, uh, faith uh, day schools. Though some might claim to say they are paid based schools, but they, they, they are not. They are not. Uh, but what we try to do is to work in, 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 in tandem with the parents. We try to sensitize them on the importance of quality education, importance of the good character molding, good character development. So we, we take the parents through seminars, through orientation, one-on-one, uh, -on -one. At times we, we, we get to their homes, we try to talk to them, uh, we organize programs that we will really make sure that these things get to the roots so that the people will be able to know. We use technology um, also to see how to reach out to them and make sure that they really accept because many of them, many of them don't really want the talking about the values. They are ready to pay their way to get their children um, the certificate, they are, they are ready to buy over 
um, maybe invigilators, they are, they, are, they are ready to get forged certificates, they are ready to even get fake uh, admission. I think I read, it, was it a, this week, how somebody was in second year, second year in the university, only they discovered that the admission letter she was giving was a fake admission letter. So there are some parents that are ready to do that. So we try as much as possible to educate these parents, to talk to them one, either one-on-one, -on -one, or we have the programs for them. During PTAs, we do that. And we try to sensitize them on the need to have sound and uh, quality education. We try to engage uh, our parents in the uh, um, education of their children by we have what we call a communication book that we do uh, that the pupils um, and that the parents check every day. So. We, whatever we give the pupils in the school to do, so we put it in the communication book. Then the parents too will also, there is a place for the parents to comment and also um, put their signature. So by so doing, we're also carrying the parents along in the progress of their, of their words, uh, words. So we try as much as possible to encourage parents, uh, as I've said earlier, uh, we encourage parents to also uh, be of good behavior at home so that the puppies can learn from them because the puppies spend more time with the parents. So they learn some of the, some, some values innocently. So we try as much as possible uh, to encourage parents to be of good behavior, to portray good character uh, in the presence of their of their children so that the puppies can pick up something good from them and also in the school to the teachers normally teachers are there to be uh, a role model for the people so basically we make use of the communication book we get feedback from the parents too and uh, we also encourage them to be of good behavior uh so during our pta meetings we have a session whereby we talk more of parenting and stuff like anything that will be useful to the parent we talk about all these things so these are our own way by which we uh uh make sure that everybody is uh, the parents particularly are carried along in the progress of their of their children their education and their moral development in what ways do you prepare the students to motivate and contribute possibly to a multicultural and multi-day site to so start with parental involvement programs we engage their parents in the children's education like i we talked earlier through workshops through the pta through volunteer opportunities to create a supportive learning environment and we try to bridge the gap between the home and the school so we get feedback from the parents but there is um open communication line my colleague talked about a communication book we tried to create that open uh, communication mechanism between the parents and the school um, in order to try to see what um, um, the traits, the character exhibited by our learners in school are they really what is obtainable at home and uh, with regular assessments, my colleague talked about um, observations, monitoring with regular observations mentoring looking at them, how they are how they are coping, how they are doing um, we give them tests, not just um, the secular tests, you can also give them tests Tests on them, um, give them a life test. Maybe you give a child, um, give him an assignment. Maybe there is a, the assignment, the project, the child is giving money um, to carry out the task. And you expect that at the end of the project, the project is properly executed, there should be a retirement. There should be um, a report on how it was done and uh, what are those things that they use and what are those things that were left over so with that we try to uh, give them the life test to really see what the practical life test um how to be able to prepare them most times you see people writing their cv so we can work with that supervision uh, we try to prepare them now so that when they are writing on their cv well, we can work on that pressure we can work with that supervision so that if you are working with somebody either the person is a christian or is an ardent Christian, is an ardent Muslim, uh, these are the things called values, called ethics that they don't joke with, they can't correct with. But the, the child should be able to, to um, um, work comfortably 
with such with with unquestionable character, with unblemished uh, records. Because once you're able to monitor them and look at them, uh, not just teaching them the moral teachings, because teaching moral teachings can be read in a book, not just teaching them, not just nurturing them, you'll be able to also look at them and uh, weigh them on the scale, on, on the scale to see whether they really meet, they, 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 they have met the, 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 the standard. So that is, those are the three ways that we do to prepare them for the multi, uh, multi-spaced society. For our own school, we try as much as possible to let the people see everybody as one. Like I said earlier, our school have mixture of both Muslims and Christians. So any people that attend our school will have seen Muslims praying. And it will not be something that is unusual to him or her. So every we observe a, a Zoom prayer that is the new, uh, the that the one we call the two o'clock prayer. So not to Zoom, we observe it in the school. So the Christians they will be in their own in the class. They will watch the pupils. They pray. So and the Muslims too, they have seen the way the Christians too they conduct their own. We worship so by so doing we i encourage them to know where to know that um, we can relate with one another irrespective of our of our faith most people cannot interact very much with uh, people of other faiths we should not be so if a uh, people uh, if a people can go on like that then they will be able to interact with other people of other people of other faiths be able to interact very well and they will they will not have any uh, issues uh, uh, with them so that's one of the ways by which we and also our parents they know for this at all our events we maybe at the beginning the Muslims can say the prayer maybe at the end the Christian can say the the prayer so everybody do <coughs> what is right uh, uh, for them so by so doing we are encourage the encourage the pupils to have religious tolerance and we have um children of various ethnic backgrounds in our own school so we have the Igbos, the yorubas the Aousas. we are very close to the barracks here and uh, so the the barracks children the police children the, some of them are yoruba some of them are Igbos. so we are all doing our culture day we try to showcase diverse uh, backgrounds so during um they they, they, they bring they wear their uh, native attires they bring their native food all these things it encourages uh, uh, tolerance and it makes the children to be able to know that we are all one in uh, uh, the country. And also, the, we have a program that we call Leaders Day. We do it every November, in this very first time in November. So, this program will expose the pupils to a lot of, of leadership topics and we also expose them to uh, things that are trending in the society. It's, and also, uh, uh, what is uh, what how the future will look like uh, for the uh, uh, for these current uh, um, children? So we expose them to a very various type of topics so that when they eventually leave our school, I used to tell them that these topics that we do teach you during our leaders' day program, these are things that we were taught after we graduated when we were going for employability training, all those trainings. But now we teach all um, the children all these things in primary and secondary schools. Looking for this is the experience I'm running your schools. What have you experienced with parents completely about the cost? Is it cost effective to run a business school or not? It's, it's, it's not all about the, the profit alone, but also the value that you are giving to the society. So for us, we can't uh, jettison our, our belief, our Islamic belief. In everything that we do, so no matter the cost that we incur in delivering uh, this uh, uh, service, so it, it, it's 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 cost effective, and uh, most local schools they uh, they bank on the population of the populace to be able to break uh, even, so. Our uh, school fees are reasonable and affordable 
uh, and at the same time it brings more uh, purpose to, to our school. So we use the advantage of the population uh, to be able to break uh, even. Though sometimes it is when you have sometimes when you have more pupils, you have more debtors and stuff like that. But all in all, when you have more population, there is always blessing and population somehow. So I think that's one of the advantage that low score schools um, uh, have. So we we bank on our population and we also uh, be able to manage our resources effectively in such a way that what is obtained in those the so-called B schools, we too we are also delivering the service. We manage our resources effectively so we are able to deliver a value to our purpose. There's nothing that is obtainable in other schools that low school schools too are not uh, uh, doing. So it's, it depends on the, the scale that you are doing uh, it. So it is very uh, um, tiring sometimes, uh, but it's, it's rewarding. It's rewarding. We enjoy the support of parents too. So sometimes when you want to organize some programs, uh, you can call your parents or the them. They will give you the, the, the desired support that you need. And so that's another thing that we also enjoy uh from running by running uh low cost uh, uh schools then parents that have sound uh, islamic knowledge they will always support the school whether you are they are paying school fees or they will always support the school they believe that when they support the school is an act of worship is an act of ibadah that is you are worshiping uh allah so they assist the school they want the muslim schools as well as the local schools to also Okay, so they give, we get some support uh, from uh, from our parents. So at, with that, it makes uh, things become um, easier. Thank you. All right, sir. Mr. Okay. Okay, we only um, big day school, that's low cost schools. You will say they're not really cost effective because uh, you are looking at um, uh, meeting high standards with um, little resources or uh, available resources because these are the um, premium, premium uh, schools schools with uh, premium school fees uh, they, they can afford uh, almost all the resources that they need from even the school fees paid by the children paid by the learners therefore low delay in local schools only goes to show that uh, what you have um, will not be able to sustain what you want to deliver. So what local schools do, maybe getting assistance from foundations, from NGOs, um, going to partnership, um, getting uh, grants and uh, um, maybe assistance to be able to run the school. But to say a local school on its own can really be able, no matter, for me, no matter the, 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 the population, no matter how the number, because with increasing population, with increasing challenges. So there is need to really get in touch with others, philanthropic uh, assistance, like he has noted, to be able to assist in running these local schools. What are your visions for the future of this education? And how do you plan to adapt to the changes in the educational landscape? Things are changing every day, and the education sector is not um, left out. Uh, in Though it has started, uh, but more people will embrace homeschooling in few years to come. Though many people have started started it, but it's not very common now. But very soon, people will want to embrace uh, homeschooling than what we currently have. Then also during the COVID era, uh, we had um, uh, more of uh, online um, um, classes. So. That's to tell us that it's not, uh, it is possible to learn anything without um, seeing your teacher. So I think more people will want to embrace this in a um, few years um, to come. So schools should try as much as possible to keep up with the, with the trend. Uh, in our old school, we, what we did during the COVID time, uh, we did uh, some um, online classes. We try as much as possible to still continue. Especially during holidays, we try to engage our pupils 
uh, in online learning during the holiday. So, by so doing, we uh, we also get some income from um, from this because most parents want their pupils to be kept busy, especially during the holiday. In fact, if some parents will have their way, they will want their children to always be in the school. And we said that is not possible, but we can continue activities online. So more, uh, more parents are also, even as a local school, some parents still want some of this, uh, most parents still want um, this um, service that we, we continue to engage the pupils uh, online. Uh, for Muslim schools, uh, more parents are now demanding um, advanced um, Arabic um, uh, education and um, Quran uh, memorization. So most Muslim schools uh, will attest to this. Whenever we want to have a new enrollment, they will ask you, are you doing Hisu Quran? Are you doing Arabic? Or so, uh, so schools that want to re uh, remain relevant must invest more in Arabic um, um, knowledge. As we all know, Arabic is one of the seven uh, United Nations uh, uh, languages. So it's very important that uh, apart from the English language, pupils uh, should be exposed to other um, languages too. So and Islam has given us Arabic. So Arabic uh, becomes uh, another very important language that pupils uh, want to learn. So and also Quran memorization. So schools that want to remain relevant, actually Muslim schools must invest heavily in this uh, uh, aspect of uh, Islamic uh, education so that our pupils can be well grounded and um, uh, it will make us pupils to uh, be above par and be able to measure up among their peers in the, uh, in the site. So these are some of the trends that uh, will be very uh, uh, visible in coming uh, years. So we are trying as much as possible to keep up with the trend. Because if you don't keep up with the trend, you just uh, uh, lose uh, your customers and you will not progress. Several trends and developments are likely to shape the landscape of our schools or education in the coming years. Um, to start with technological integration, uh, increased integration of technology into teaching and learning processes, where um, my colleague just talked about online platforms. We really see the during the COVID nineteen era, it really shows that we can make use of virtual learning. What has been going on in other uh, climes, in similar climes? Um, in our own country, so that yes, we think we can actually use this. So, the use of online platforms, educational apps, uh, more of educational apps, digital resources will be there to enhance access, engagement, and personalized learning experiences. Not just that, the blending uh, lending models where we adopt. Um, uh, models that combine traditional face to face instruction with online learning. Align this will allow for flexibility and not just that for customization and not just that. It's also going to help in scaling delivering educational content in, in a way that will support diverse learning needs. So that is key. Not just that, you really see that there will be higher focus on. STEAM education, um, science, technology, um, engineer, engineering, arts, mathematics. And uh, more, more focus, or much focus on it will be to prepare the students for uh, better careers, well paid careers in high demand fields. And uh, that was also have to foster innovation, problem solving skills, and the uh, critical thinking abilities. Uh, in the coming years, we're also looking at that there will be global, more of global citizenship education. Uh, we, we, are, we are seeing now, like in Nigeria, we are seeing now that most foreign more foreign universities, they are looking for a way to come into Nigeria to establish their own, the, the campuses of their own university. But not just that, we'll see that um, 
somebody can be at home it, my colleague talked about home home learning uh increasing emphasis on this global citizenship education will bring about cultural competency not just that intercultural understanding to prepare the students for living and working in an intercontinental world where you talk about the multi-spaced world so uh, we should be able to have a global citizenship education that will address global challenges such as climate change, poverty, social inequality. In the coming years, I think we should be able to look at inclusive education practices where there will be um, continued focus, continued balance focus on inclusive education practices where there is no, where there is equity, um, there is people uh, promote diversity and also promote social justice where all students including those that are disabled, they, have, they, they are physically challenged, they have special needs, or from marginalized backgrounds, can have equal access to quality education and support services. There should be strengthened partnership between schools, um, families, communities, and stakeholders to address um, shared educational goals, um, and um, resources, and not just that, we want to promote collaboration in supporting student success and well-being. Just we're concluding the whole conversation. Okay. Um, what we are trying to say is that um, we, are, we are looking at state-based schools and local schools. That definitely, with time, I think we are going to see increasing demand for parental choice, which is already taking place. There will be more of increasing demand for uh, parental choice and empowerment in education including the expansion of school choice programs. My colleague talked about this homeschooling options. And there will also be alternative education pathways that will cater uh, to divide, to diverse um, teaming preference and family needs. So the future of faith-based and local education is likely to be something unique and um, uh, something uh, worth uh, doing, what we're looking for. But every home will definitely want their children to be in faith-based schools where their children will be taught good morals that will be incorporated into them and even when they grow up. Mr. Nwasha, your button short. For me, uh, for local schools and as, and as well as uh, faith-based schools to really do uh, better than what they are doing now. We need to collaborate more with one another. Uh, collaboration is very important. So schools can collaborate with like-minded schools around. Uh, we are, we, though we are competitors, but we can also always do things uh, uh, together. Uh, local schools uh, can belong to uh, associations, uh, school uh, associations. So we can do much more together. So, for example, you know, local schools don't have that big capital to do a lot of things. So, but when we come together, we'll be able to do a whole lot of things. For example, in our own um, our session, League of Muslim School Proprietors, so we try which as well to reduce um, our cost of school activities. For example, we organize joint inter-house sports that... If you do join the transport, the cost will be reduced. Or like if you do it alone, uh -huh. we also do uh, what is it called? Children's Day program together. We do a uh, Hijra program. Hijra is the beginning of the Islamic New Year. We do all these programs together. Uh, unlike when a school uh, hold it alone, uh, I hold it alone. You spend more, and you will not even be able to achieve uh, the objectives. But when you collaborate with like minds, uh, actually in your session, then you need to do a whole lot of things uh, uh, together. Uh, you, you go for quiz competitions, uh, you do um, debate competition, all those things, all those programs that will be useful for the pupils, then you can use your session to do all these things and you will be able to achieve uh, uh, a whole uh, lot. So I, I want to encourage uh, local schools and faith-based schools to collaborate more with one uh, another to be able to achieve uh, more for the benefit of their of their pupils and the school as a whole. Thank you very much.
think we want to provide perspectives on running age based schools. Over the past hour, I've been on with two school proprietors. One is Muslim, the other is Christian, Mr. Abdul Rafiz Animashan, and Mr. Namso Okori. They joined us to share perspectives on running faith based schools vis a vis the challenges of the society today. And hopefully, you can get in touch with these and other episodes of the education podcast on edusaleb.com, where we have educational related information in form of news, facts, and guides. Until next time, I remain your host, Abu Salam Amo. Bye for now.